Hey guys, thanks for joining me today and thanks for what, continuing to watch. I'm really encouraged by the uh, views and the new subscribers and some of the comments have been great and I really appreciate that. So anyways, today it's about weed, kill it, weed killing and taking care of weeds in the garden. And when you have two acres, it's really just a constant battle every three to four months of just destroying new weeds that pop up. And the reason is, is like most of my garden, especially the vegetable garden, I probably have a mile of walking path made out of this product right here, which is called number 57 gravel and weeds grow in it constantly so i'm always battling weeds and most of the time i'm using this product right here which is a roundup not sure how safe it is i've heard a lot of discussion that they've changed their formulation since their legal issues and so it's supposedly more safe than it used to be so i don't know if that's true or not but i like using natural things when possible i do have a lot of pets in the yard and so i want to use the safest thing possible but it's at the same time destroy the weeds that are just taking over certain parts of the garden and i'm going to film that too but what's the easiest way to do it i use a specialized weed sprayer and it's it makes the job a lot easier i'll show you that in a second but what i want to talk about is the formulation so i'll bring you in closer and show you exactly what i'm doing so all the discussion i've seen online about natural weed killing or homemade weed killing products that you make yourself revolve around these three products liquid dish soap, table salt, and just regular vinegar. But I've upgraded that to some something different that I feel works much, much better. And, and these, this will work. I'm not saying this will not work. But um, I like having the maximum effect on killing the weeds because I only want to do it once every three or four months. I don't want to have to do this every, every week or every two weeks. I'd be exhausted just from weed killing. So these three products are good. There's nothing wrong with them. But there's a secret ingredient I use like this. But this, this right here I ordered off of Amazon. And this is the second or third time I've done it. But this is truly the secret ingredient right here. It's 45% vinegar. Whereas this, the grocery store vinegar, is nowhere near. I'm looking for the exact concentration. It's 5%. So you can see there's a massive difference. Okay, This was around 5 or $6. I don't remember the exact price. It wasn't tremendously expensive. This on Amazon was around $20, but the concentration is so much higher. I think it's going to be much more effective and work much better. Now, the second ingredient everyone talks about is table salt, and that's great. It is toxic to weeds and grass and any other thing that you want to kill plant-wise. But I think Epsom salt works better. It's said that it adheres to the plant better. So this right here, instead of a cup of table salt, I would use a cup of Epsom salt but it needs to be finely grained, and I'll tell you why in just a second. And then, of course, Dawn dish washing soap, as within most recipes you see online, yes, I still use that about roughly about one cup in the container. I'll, I'll show you just a second. But, yeah, this also helps with the, uh, I think the word is surfactant level. It sticks to the plant better, and so, yes, you still need to use that. The fourth ingredient I use is to be able to tell me where I've sprayed I'm going to come back in a day, two or three or four days later, is this right here. So nobody talks about this, but this is blue food coloring that I add to the tank so I can see exactly where I've sprayed. So it leaves a light blue residue and I know, oh, I've sprayed there. Well, let me just wait and see what happens. So those are the four ingredients I use, but there's something about Epsom salt that I need to do right now because the sprayer I use is not cheap. So we'll set that up and we'll go to the step one of this process. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I want to liquefy the salt, the Epsom salt. So I wanna make it as easy as possible to go through the pump on the sprayer. And so usually if it's a one gallon mixture, it's gonna be one cup, one cup of Epsom salt to one gallon. But I've got a four gallon sprayer and I'm reducing the concentration there just a little bit. So I'm gonna go with two cups per four gallons and it should be just fine not i can always go back and respray and this is a lot it's about two cups yep two cups of epsom salt and it's if i don't know if you can pick it up on the camera but it's it's about the same coarseness as table salt maybe a little bit more coarse and so we're going to put that in our blender and we're going to mix this as fine as possible so maybe 30 seconds because we want the uh, salt to go through the pump. Like I said, this is a expensive sprayer, so I don't want to do anything that's going to damage it. OK. 
Okay. And so we have our Epsom salt mixed. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure our vinegar is ready to go. They have it safety sealed here. I'm going to remove the top. And it is going to have a lot stronger odor. One thing you have to remember, and I'll hopefully I'll say this more than once, is that you don't want to, wow, that is a strong vinegar smell. You don't want to do this on a windy day because you can breathe the fumes in from, from the vinegar and you might end up in a lot of pain. So make sure you do this on a very still and very calm day. The hose length and the, the wand length on my sprayer is very long, so my face is nowhere near the, uh, the exhaust on this. So make sure that you don't get close to this as it's floating in the air. Preferably, you don't want to do this in, in a really fine mist either. You want it more of a, a spray because this is not so much toxic, but it is, it is very strong vinegar. I guess you could say it's toxic because once it gets into the lungs or the nasal, you will regret that quite severely. So let me get the sprayer set up and we'll start putting the ingredients together. Okay, so this is my specialized sprayer and it's made by Chapin. And I'm really, I've really been happy with it because the sprayer I had before this was completely manual and you had you had the uh, side pump and you had to do this over and over while you were trying to spray so this sprayer makes it so much easier it's not cheap i can't remember what i paid for it but it was less than i believe it was like around 200 dollars. So i can't tell you the exact price and of course price is changing so much lately but it is battery powered and the reason i chose this particular one is that it uses this battery here which is made by Black & Decker. And I have tons of these that I use with drills. I think I've got seven or eight batteries that are still still in working order, still can hold the charge. So this is why I bought this particular one. There are other brands out there that I could have picked that are actually more expensive, but the batteries, I would have had to buy a specialized battery just for that pump sprayer. So this one, I liked it because it used Black & Decker batteries and I have lots of those. This is a four gallon sprayer. So, and it's also at the top, there's a built-in mesh filter. So that keeps you from accidentally getting something in there you don't want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully, now this is uh, the exact amount here is one gallon. So I'm doing one gallon in a four gallon container. So it's one part vinegar and three parts water. So I'm going to carefully pour this and try not to breathe any of the fumes if there are any, because it is a really strong vinegar. And one thing I would tell you, if you do use any type of pump sprayer, you want to clean this out thoroughly after each use. Let the, put some fresh water in it, let it run through to make sure you're getting rid of all the salt because salt damages equipment and it will damage all of the mechanism here if you don't clean it out thoroughly. So don't forget that. The next thing I'm adding is our Epsom salt. And it looks like it has been liquefied. There's a little bit of salt left in the base of that. I'm not going to pour that in there because I just want the, the salt to be as liquid as possible. The last thing, I'm going to add one cup of the Dawn dishwashing soap. And it sounds like a lot, but we're, we're using four gallons. So if you were just using one to one gallon here you would only use maybe a quarter cup like that and so the last thing i'm going to look for my missing and we go food coloring and i'm going to put not just a few drops but i'm going to put enough to make it noticeable so when i spray so maybe i'm not quite half maybe a quarter of this container so that is our ingredients the vinegar, soap, salt, and the blue food coloring. That's our four ingredients here. And you can see, I guess you can see it. It's really a blue color. But of course, this is blue as well, and there's food coloring in that. But this is a concentrated food coloring. So you're going to be able to see it after you do a spray. And we're going to move this outside, top this off of water, and go out into the area that I need to spray. And we'll know in 24, 48 hours how well it works. Okay, guys, so one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to use my homemade insect repellent. And this I, this I did in a previous video, so if you want to see it, 
you can take a look completely all natural two of the ingredients directly from the garden and so that will keep the mosquitoes gnats and other biting things off of me but yes i made this in a previous video and i usually do this about once a month and so it keeps uh, it's more safe i think because it's not doesn't have any chemical ingredients other than two from the garden and two things that you probably already have in your kitchen so that's step one okay so now that we've taken care of any chance of being bitten by the massive amount of mosquitoes in the yard i'm going to do step two which is adding the water to our sprayer and we're going to top it up to four gallons and i'm going to try not to hit this directly because we'll cause a massive amount of bubble on mark so i'm going to Carefully add that. And just watch till it reaches the four, four gallon mark. And because it's because of the Dawn dishwashing soap, we really have to be careful because it wants to, it wants to come out of there. And I may have to tilt it a little bit. So we're going to put our cap on. We've got a lot of soap suds coming out there. We're going to put our cap on shake a little bit to make sure it's mixed of course the water going in should have mixed it okay pumps ready and so i'm going to go out to the area that i have a massive amount of weeds growing and uh, i don't know if you've ever heard of mimosa but mimosa is terrible here it will just send out there's one at the very back of the property that's on another person's property and it sends out seeds all the way into my yard i have massive amounts of mimosa uh, seedlings just popping up so i'm going to use that as well that's that is a tree and so we're going to go to that area and we will spray a large area and of course 24 hours later we'll know the results so this is quite heavy four gallons of water plus the weight of the pack the weight of the sprayer itself so if you're not able you'll probably want to go with a two two gallons inside the sprayer rather than four if you if you decide to opt for this type of sprayer so i'm going to go to the area that i need to water and we'll set the camera up so you can see what's happening and we'll know in 24 hours. So one more thing I want to talk about before I head out to the heavily weeded area. This area is kind of a parking area that leads to the fire pit and to the greenhouse. This area was covered with mimosas popping up, weeds, and so last month I sprayed it with the solution and you can see there's very few things growing in here alive. There's a few things starting to pop up. Nothing, nothing's going to die permanently because there's a breakdown because of rain. But this area was sprayed and it looks great. Very few weeds, few popping up. But overall, that's just a demonstration of what it can do. Every year this has to be sprayed because the number 57 gravel allows weeds to grow in it pretty easy. Just soil under it. There's no special uh, tarping or anything like that. So it works great. So as I'm walking to the weeded area, on this gravel path. I'm just looking for weeds as I go. And one thing to remember, this will kill anything growing in the yard, any kind of a weed or grass. So you wanna make sure that you don't spray your grass with it. The grass is looking great, so I don't even wanna spray. This is a kills everything. So I'm just gonna go through, and I'm sorry about the noise of the sprayer. I know that's really annoying. So we're just gonna spray as we go, looking for weeds. And of course, we'll come back in 24 hours. No guarantee that this is going to work in 24 hours. Sometimes it takes anywhere from three to five days. But let's get the camera set up and I'll show you the area that's most needed for weed control. So this is part of the gravel path that I've sprayed previously. You can see that there's no weeds growing on the gravel path. There's a lot of dead things. Also, I've sprayed next to the edge of it. And of course, you're going to have, come, you're going to have things regrowing. There's no way to stop that. But you can see until you get right there where I stopped spraying previously, this entire area is weed free grass free nothing's growing in it so this is just a demonstration of how well this product works no weeds and then where i stopped you can see weeds mimosa all that stuff is still growing i'm going to get a little bit closer so you can see exactly what it looks like and we'll move the camera again so this is mimosa and in the evening it tends to fold up as leaves but it is very annoying it just multiplies it's basically a tree but it needs to be killed and taken care of. Let's see if the camera will focus. And so you can see the leaves have folded up for the evening, but in the daytime it will open up. I'm assuming that's to protect itself from nighttime insects. 
it's really nice when you have one of these well well manicured trees but the problem is is that it puts out massive amounts of seeds you can see it all right here and i'll zoom out a little bit so you can see it a little better lots of weeds and so i'm going to just start spraying right here try to knock them out and i'll spray right next to the path So you can see with the sprayer, I'm, I'm carefully covering it to make sure. I'll try that again. So you can see with the uh, sprayer, it covers really well. I don't have to do any pumping. It's just a uh, pump there, battery operated pump, and it works great. But I don't want to leave any spots, but I can see a little bit of the blue food coloring there. It's hard to see on camera, I'm sure, but it's there. And so I'll know where I've sprayed and where I haven't sprayed. So I'm just going to start by spraying on the walking path and make sure we get it there. I don't want to spray any of my cattails I've been cultivating for many years. Interesting story about the cattails. I always wanted to have cattails in the garden, and so I'll try to get a better shot of them. But when the breeze is blowing, they just kind of sway back and forth, and I, I just love the way it looks. So as you can see, I have a lot of weeds in this walking path, and this is probably the worst one because it receives full sunlight. Some of the other walking paths, it's not near as bad. But this one in particular, lots of, uh, lots of sunshine and therefore lots of weeds. So I'm double spraying it to make sure I get it all. And wow, I can really smell the vinegar. It's very strong. So let me keep moving, and we'll get this last part knocked out. Okay guys, so one thing to remember, this, as with all sprayers, there's mechanical parts in there. And uh, you know, the vinegar, I'm not sure about, but I know salt will damage it and there's a pump here and there's manual pumps on other, other uh, sprayers. So make sure you wash this out three times, get everything out of it, run water through the system. And then that way you don't have to worry about rust, uh, some type of damage caused by the salt. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna rinse this out and we will be through with this demonstration. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to just run clear water, clean water through the system. Okay, we're just running a lot of water through the pump and the, uh, the line and the handle to make sure we get all of the salt out of there. Okay, so a final note on your equipment is I made sure I washed the inside of the cap and the filter basket because I want to make sure there's no salt residue anywhere in the equipment this would eventually find its way to the pump, and I'm sure it would do a number on that. If you live in Florida or the Northeast, you know how salt on the roads does quite a number on your exhaust system if you don't have a specially treated car. And uh, I lived in Florida once many, many, many years ago, and it went through an exhaust system that was not a, sprayed properly or treated properly for salt on the roads. So make sure you get the salt out of there, and that is a important thing. Um, so as John Wayne once said, we're burning daylight and I've got to get this mess cleaned up. And for younger people who don't know who John Wayne is, uh, check out The Birdcage. He was talked about in that movie as well. Hey guys, so thanks for watching. I appreciate every view and every subscriber. And I really appreciate comments because it gives me new ideas and things to do. And it also teaches me things because I think everyone's learning something at some point and they're at some stage of that learning. So anyways, um, if you would, like and subscribe. I love each one of you, and I hope you'll continue to watch. Have a great day.